Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. <laughs> it's time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks under the direction of Al Lewis. Well, there's no doubt about it. The hopped-up jalopy has replaced the tandem bicycle in most of our high schools. And occasionally, reckless driving poses a problem to the faculty. Our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High, became acquainted with this problem last week. It was on Tuesday, to be exact, and I became intimately acquainted with the problem. As I was crossing the street, a wild-eyed kid bore down on me in something that looked like a torpedo with four wheels and a raccoon tail. <laughs> If I hadn't been wearing my gym shoes, I would now be welded to the grill of a Model A. <laughs> At breakfast Wednesday morning, I discovered that Mrs. Davis, my landlady, was concerned about this problem, too. I tell you, Connie, it's getting so dangerous that a body doesn't want to walk in the street anymore. Not if it has a head on it, it doesn't. <laughs> the poor traffic cops have their hands full. Well, the police can't correct this recklessness by themselves. We've got to do something about it in our schools. Say, how do you like this for an idea? Wonderful, Connie. It's just what this town needs. <laughs> but I haven't told it to you yet. Oh. oh, I'm so sorry. I've been seeing a lot of my sister Angela lately. She's, uh, <laughs> she's so absent-minded, poor dear. Yes, I know, Mrs. Davis, but please listen to this. I'm going to suggest to Mr. Conklin that we form our own student police force. It would be made up of students who drive their own cars, and they'd have the power to arrest anyone who violated traffic laws. That sounds good. It's just like uh, self-government, isn't it? It's more like self-preservation. <laughs> Another thing you should do is to start a class in driving at Madison. You might have something there, Mrs. Davis. You know, Clay City High has a driving class. I know it. And their principal, Jason Brill, is Mr. Conklin's arch-rival. Why, he even donated his own car for the class. I remember reading about it. Mr. Conklin should certainly go for my ideas, if only to show he's as progressive-minded as Mr. Brill. Oh, that's Walter Denton. He's driving me down to school. I'll just be a minute, Walter. <laughs> See you tonight, Mrs. Davis. All right, Connie. Now, uh, don't forget to tell Mr. Conklin your ideas about the student police force and the driving class. I won't. And remember our safety motto... Which one is that? Uh, which one is what? <laughs> Our safety motto. Oh, that's a dandy one. <laughs> yes, it should catch on in no time. Well, goodbye again, Mrs. Davis. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Good morning, Walter. Good morning to you, all fairest of the faculty. <laughs> anything different today? Different? Let's see. Oh, yes. You've got jam on your face instead of peanut butter. <laughs> oh, I don't mean about me. I mean about my car. I take a good look. Well, for heaven's sake, who stole your fenders? And what are those outlandish pipes sticking out for? Huh, I know you're not very mechanical-minded, Miss Brooks, so I'll make it very simple. Stretch Snodgrass and I hopped it up in auto school, shop at school. You see, first of all, we dropped the chassis springs, we put in a lightweight camshaft, two Winfield downdraft pots, and a four-port Riley super speed high compression head. Do you follow? Not quite. What did you say after you said, I'll make it very simple? <laughs> Look, just hop in, and I'll show you how this heap of heavenly hot iron can dig out. <sighs> Comfy, Miss Brooks? Snug as a bug in the engine room of a destroyer. <laughs> My legs are sort of tangled up with these pipes and valves, but what's this strange thing sticking out of the engine that looks like a thermos jug? It's a thermos jug. <laughs> I strap my lunch to the engine because Mother likes me to have a hot meal these days. <laughs> well, nothing like a nice bologna and battery acid sandwich. <laughs> well, let's get started, Walter. <laughs> Hang on, Miss Brooks. I'll turn her over. Here we go. 
Connie Brooks to control tower. Connie Brooks to control tower. Please give us a clearance. We're taking off for the next airport. Over and out and across the river and into the trees. <laughs> Exactly four minutes and nine seconds. Say, Miss Brooks, you look a little blue. What's wrong? Nothing's wrong. What color do you get when you hold your breath for four minutes and nine seconds? <laughs> I didn't mean to frighten you. Uh-oh. Mr. Conklin just got out of his car up ahead. I better park somewhere else. <laughs> I'll talk to you about your driving later on, young man. Right now, I've got something to take up with our beloved principal. Okay, Miss Brooks. See you in Good morning, Mr. Conklin. May I speak with you for a moment? You'll have to wait until I look over this rear fender of mine, Miss Brooks. <laughs> My dear wife used the car yesterday, backed it out of the garage in her customary side saddle manner. <laughs> <laughs> Women drivers. Gad, it'll cost me $10 to have that fender straightened out. Oh, not necessarily, Mr. Conklin. You could put it into the school shop, and the boys will be happy to fix it for nothing. Just what I was thinking. The boys in the school shop will be happy to fix it for nothing. Now, what is it you wanted to talk to me about? The reckless driving among our teenage citizens. The local police force just can't cope with it alone. Now, what I had in mind was a student police force with authority to discipline themselves. A student police force? But who ever heard of such a thing? It's preposterous. No, it isn't, Mr. Conklin. The kids would be ashamed to be caught driving recklessly by their own friends. And in conjunction with the police force, I think we should have a driving class at Madison. You mean you are actually proposing that we teach our students to drive an automobile during the regular school hours? Those who need it, yes. We could... Oh, look who just got to school. It's Mr. Boynton, isn't it? But he's behind you. How could you tell? By the way, your eyeballs spun around in their sockets. I always do that when I get something in my eye, especially him. <laughs> Good morning, Miss Brooks, Mr. Conklin. Hello, Boynton. Uh, sir, uh, there's something I want to suggest to uh, you. In, in a moment, Boynton. First, I'd like you to listen to an idea I just had. Yes, sir? What would you think of our instituting in this school a student police force? A student police force? Exactly. One with authority to discipline each and every offender among the student body. Well, say, that sounds like a fine idea. You really like it? I love it. I hate it. <laughs> I mean, that was only part please, of it. Please, please, Miss Brooks, please. I'd uh, <laughs> like to hear what Mr. Boynton has to say to me. Well, sir, it was just that I read where Jason Brill over at Clay City has organized a driving class for the students, and I think we should follow suit. Some days it doesn't pay to get out of bed. <laughs> a driving class, eh? Now, that's what I call a sterling suggestion. An extremely original thought, Boynton. It is with a great deal of pleasure, therefore, that I hereby appoint you Madison's driving instructor. You will give your first lesson at 2 o'clock today. Oh, but Mr. Conklin, I can't give any lessons today. I've got too full a schedule. Besides, this isn't a job for just one person. From what I've read of other schools, it's usually operated by a team of teachers. Oh, I see. Well, who else should we get? Well, how about Miss Brooks here? Miss Brooks? Boynton, are you suggesting that we have a woman teach our already reckless drivers how to operate a motor vehicle in safety? <laughs> Isn't that like carrying coals to Newcastle? <laughs> I don't mind. I'll wear gloves. <laughs> well, I've driven with Miss Brooks many times, sir, and I can assure you she's extremely competent behind the wheel. I suppose there's nothing else we can do. So against my better judgment... I hereby appoint you one of the instructors, Miss Brooks. Oh, you won't be sorry, Mr. Conklin. I'll make you glad you picked me. You'll see, I'll do a great job with these kids. I'll get them right in line. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, step back, Miss Brooks. You're fogging my glasses. <laughs> yes, Mr. Conklin. Now, for the head student traffic officer, I'd like to submit the name of Walter Denton. Walter Denton? <laughs> but I've seen that idiot drive. To propose Walter Denton as a police officer is devoid of any spark of intelligence, Miss Brooks. But you're wrong, Mr. Conklin. Don't you see, this is a perfect example of criminal psychology. By making the worst offender a law enforcement agent, he is automatically eliminated as a reckless driver. 
Well, it does seem to be a pretty logical argument, sir. Uh, wait, wait, wait a minute, both of you. While you were talking, I was thinking. Why don't we appoint, as head of the student police force, somebody like Walter Denton? <laughs> <laughs> that idiot driver? <laughs> don't you get it? By making the worst offender a law enforcement agent, he is automatically eliminated as a reckless driver. Mr. Conklin, that's a stroke of sheer genius. Let me shake your hand, sir. Here. <laughs> well, Miss Brooks, do you care to add anything to my little plan? Yes, sir, I would, but there's one thing that prevents me. Oh, what's that? I can't seem to get my words out of your mouth. <laughs> Brush your teeth with Colgate. Colgate Dental Cream. It cleans your breath. What a toothpaste. What a cleans your teeth. Colgate toothpaste. Cleans your breath. What a toothpaste. What a cleans your teeth. Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. And the Colgate way stops tooth decay best. More than two years' research showed the Colgate way of brushing teeth right after eating helps stop more decay for more people than ever before reported in dentifrice history. Yes, the Colgate way stopped tooth decay best, better than any other home method of oral hygiene. No other dentifrice, ammoniated or not, has proof of such results. And you should know that Colgate, while not mentioned by name, was the one and only toothpaste used in the research on tooth decay recently reported in Reader's Digest. So always follow the Colgate way to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. And stop tooth decay best. Brush your teeth with Colgate. Colgate dental cream. It cleans your breath. What a toothpaste. What a cleans your teeth. And the Colgate way stops tooth decay best. Well, right after lunch period, Mr. Boynton had to go down to the biology supply house. I wanted him to stay and help me with the driving lessons, but he said he couldn't afford to miss a great opportunity. It seems the supply house had just received a rare shipment by airmail. As I recall, they were either English angleworms or English ingleworms. <laughs> in any event, I had to stop in Mr. Conklin's office for further instructions. Uh, well, Miss Brooks, as faculty advisor to the new student police force, you'll be pleased to know that Mr. Stone, the head of the Board of Education, is 100% behind my plan. Good. He had one suggestion, moreover, which I believe to be sound. The force will function as a policing agency for both students and faculty. If a teacher is caught violating a traffic law in this area, he or she will be punished accordingly. That sounds fair. Uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now, I have before me a list of possible penalties for the guilty ones. As you know, we can't fine the students, and it would be inequitable to impose cash fines upon the teachers. Inequitable and uncollectible. <laughs> Quiet. Uh, so, for the first offender, I have decided that the penalty be will be mowing the lawn every day for a month and cleaning all the windows. All the windows in the school? Uh, no, all the windows in my house. <laughs> but this is a school project. The board would never stand for anybody doing your personal work, warden. I mean, Mr. Conk. <laughs> <laughs> On second thought, nothing succeeds like good old KP. Yes, that's it. When we really want to make an example of someone, we'll do what we did in the army. We'll hustle him up to the cafeteria, hand him a mop, and say... Get with it, Matilda. Make those floors shine. <laughs> what branch of the wax were you in? <laughs> now, about the driving class, Mr. Conklin, there's one minor detail we've overlooked. What's that, Miss Brooks? We don't have an automobile. It'll take quite a bit of time for the board to provide a vehicle for us. Well, borrow one temporarily. All right, I will. Mr. Conklin, may I borrow your car for the driving lesson today? <laughs> My car? You must be joking. You don't think I'd entrust my automobile to a gang of scatterbrained, bumbling jitterbugs, do you? But, sir, Jason Brill donated his car to Clay City High. Jason Brill? Yes, sir. And every paper in the city ran his picture and a nice story about him. The silver one on the end is the ignition key. <laughs> Stretch, I want to talk 
to you. Who wants to talk to me? Huh, don't let the black turtleneck sweater and the pilot's goggles fool you. It's me, Walter. Well, for goodness sake. What are you dressed up like that for, Walter? Going to a max parade? <laughs> of course not. No, I've just been commissioned captain of the Madison High Safety Patrol. No kidding. When do you go overseas? <laughs> I don't. Look, it's a local office. I'm head of the student police force. You see, I just got my orders from the Board of Education. And Mr. Stone himself told me to be sure and make an example out of any traffic violators. And that includes teachers, too. No fooling. It's a big responsibility, Stretch. You know something, Walter? I can see a change in you already. You can? Sure, you got jam on your face instead of peanut butter. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder how we got to be such good friends. <laughs> Oh, look who's coming in, Walter. It's Miss Brooks. Oh, she hasn't seen me since I put this black outfit on. I'll slip the goggles over my eyes and see if she recognizes me. Okay. Hi, Miss Brooks. Look who's here. Recognize him? I'd know him anywhere. Baron von Richthofen. <laughs> no, ma'am. It's me, Walter Denton. Now, this is the outfit I'm going to wear for tracking down traffic criminals. Well, I've got to get ready to go on patrol, Miss Brooks. Uh, will you excuse me? Of course, Baron. Uh, Walter. <laughs> see you later, Captain Denton At ease, my man Well, see you at the lineup, Miss Brooks I'm looking forward to it Well, Stretch, Mr. Conklin sent his car over here to be repaired Could you tell me where it is? Well, it's right there That's the one I just finished working on You? Yes, ma'am I straightened out a fender for him It's as good as new now Oh, fine Also, I had an extra hour to kill in the shop So I went under the hood and fixed up Mr. Conklin's clutch, retimed his distributor, and checked his ignition system. But I've got to give a lesson in that car. Oh, don't worry about that, Miss Brooks. What I'd done couldn't make too much difference. Not when I had to work in the dark like I did. <laughs> in the dark? The bulb burned out in my work light. I did the whole job in total blackness. But why didn't you put another bulb in the work light? My motto is, don't tackle no new trouble till you conquer your old trouble. <laughs> I better tell you about a few simple changes I made in the mechanism. I discovered them after I got the light fixed. I wish I knew more about self-hypnosis. Go on, Stretch. Well, first of all, to let out the clutch, use the brake pedal instead. <laughs> That's a pretty simple change. All I have to do is put my right shoe on my left foot. <laughs> Please continue. Well, I jazzed up the motor so it can really dig out, only use a hand throttle. The gas pedal now acts as the brake. <laughs> In the glove compartment? <laughs> no, ma'am. I eliminated reverse. And also first and second. And I fixed the ignition so you have to turn it on from under the hood. That way nobody can steal the car. Who'd want it? <laughs> Stretch, before I take this flying saucer out of here, are you quite certain I won't have to steer from the back seat? Gosh, no, Miss Brooks. That'd be dangerous. <laughs> Stretch, remind me to mark your next test paper with an empty fountain pen. All right, kids, quiet down. Now, we've completed our basic blackboard work on courtesy of the road, and now we're going to have a practical demonstration out here on the street. Harriet Conklin, I believe your hand was up first. Yes, Miss Brooks. I'm very anxious to learn how to drive. Of course, I don't know how Daddy will feel about it. It shouldn't take long to find out. He's standing right at your elbow. How observant. <laughs> what is all this, Harriet? I've wanted to learn for a long time, Daddy. Mother says she thinks I should. Oh, she does. <laughs> well, won't that be bully for me? <laughs> Mine will be the only car in town being driven by two Fender assassins. <laughs> Please, Daddy. I'll be very careful. And Miss Brooks is here to teach me. Exactly. I refuse to place my own flesh and blood in jeopardy. But, Mr. Conklin, Harriet has just as much right to take advantage of this class as any of the other kids. You said yourself, Daddy, that this school is run on democratic principles. Please let me learn. Oh, all right. But you're not going to learn from Miss Brooks. I personally will give you your first lesson. Get in, Harriet. 
But, Daddy, what'll Miss Brooks... Your precious Miss Brooks can climb in with us. Now, come on. Maybe I can teach you to operate this vehicle and still eliminate some of the natural female driving instincts. Uh, before you start, Mr. Conklin, the ignition is on, but I think uh, you, you should know... Will you please that... get in? Yes, sir. <laughs> Mr. Conklin, I'd like to explain something about the mechanism of this car. It's got a new you... kind of... You want to explain something to me about my own car? <laughs> now, that is what I call rich. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I guess I'm just a copycat. <laughs> started, Daddy. I'm anxious to get the principles down pat. When we get started, I know one principle you'll have down. <laughs> uh, ladies, ladies, stop the chattering, please. We're about to begin. Now, first, Harriet, to start the car, I press this little button on the dashboard. Firmly. Like this. It didn't start. No, but all the lights went on. <laughs> <clears throat> I'll try it again. Ah, there we are. Now, I'll just shift it into first gear. What's this? The clutch won't move. Of course not. You've got to step on the brake. <laughs> step on the brake? To start my car? You depress that brake pedal, Harriet. Let's surprise your daddy. Okay, yeah. here goes. Ooh. Good heavens, what happened? Watch where you're driving, Dad. You, uh, yeah. <laughs> We're going 50 miles an hour, and I haven't shifted into high yet. <laughs> any first or second gear. Oh. Isn't any first or second gear? <laughs> Boy, this car can really dig out, Daddy. Yeah. One more turn like that and they'll dig us out of the upholstery. <laughs> oh, this is awful. We're at the mercy of this steel monster. I've got to stop it. I would if I were you. Just step on the gas pedal. The gas pedal? You just went through a red light, Daddy. Mm -hmm. Now you're on the wrong side of the street. Please, sir, jam your foot down on the gas pedal. She's taken leave of her senses. We've got a maniac in the car with her. Calm down, Daddy. Maybe mm. you ought to turn off the motor. What? The motor? Oh, yes, yes. Yes, that's what I'll do. I'll turn off the motor. But the ignition switch. Where's the ignition switch? <laughs> that's up front, under the hood. <laughs> Oh, good. I just step out and I walk up to the... Under the hood! <laughs> Look out, Mr. Conklin. There's a streetcar. Oh, it's all right, Miss Brooks. Daddy's passing it on the left. Yeah. I know. <laughs> but he's coming towards us. There's only one way to stop this juggernaut. I'll try to ease it over the sidewalk up ahead and bring it to stop against one of those hedges. Oh, oh, here's a hedge that looks nice and bushy. Well, what do you know? They trimmed it. Our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight? Yes, tonight. Show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Luster cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives you K. Dumas' magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Better than a soap, better than a liquid... Luster Cream is a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft, manageable. Even in hardest water, Luster Cream lathers instantly. So gentle, 
Luster Cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight? Yes, tonight, try Luster Cream Shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, as soon as we determined that no one was injured, Harriet tried to console her father about the condition of his car. The insurance company will take care of your car, Daddy. They may even get you a brand new one. Oh, you're right at that, Harriet. Say, it could have been a lot worse, couldn't it? Turn your head slowly to the left, Mr. Conklin. What? Stop in the name of the law! (laughs) (laughs) Now, that's what I call a timely command. (laughs) Why, it's Walter Denton. So it is. Well, you just keep your nose out of this, Denton. You will kindly refer to me as Captain Denton. You forget, sir, I was commissioned by your superior officer, Mr. Stone, head of the Board of Education. What? But there's no reason for him to hear this. Not unless you're recalcitrant. Nice word, Captain Denton. (laughs) Thanks, Miss Brooks. May I borrow your pencil, please, sir? My pencil? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Here you are. Captain... We were just driving along at a normal rate of speed, but suddenly things seemed to walk. How do you spell psychopathic? (laughs) Psychopathic. P-S-Y-C-H-O-P-A-T-H-I-C. Now, you don't have to enter too specific a report about Uh, this. Driving down Main Street like a psychopathic idiot. (laughs) What? P-S-Y-C-H-O-P-A-T-H-I-C. Look here, Denton. Officer Denton. Couldn't we talk this over, Walter? Walter, my boy. (laughs) Son. I'm sorry, Mr. Conklin. It's extremely difficult for me in this instance, but I must be ruthless. It is difficult for him, Mr. Conklin. Walter's naturally very Ruth. Here you are, sir. (laughs) The punishment is written on the ticket. Oh, where? Where? My glasses fell off when we stopped this booby trap. Here, I'll read it for you, Mr. Conklin. It says... For offenses too offensive to mention, starting this evening, the prisoner will serve 30 days on KP. KP? Me? But I can. I won't. I won't. Something must be done about this. Well, don't sit there, Miss Brooks. Tell me what I can do. Pick up your mop, Matilda. Those floors must shine tonight. <laughs> week to another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written by Al Lewis, with the music of Wilbur Hatch. Mr. Boynton is played by Jeff Chandler, Mr. Conklin by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, Gloria McMillan, and Leonard Smith. You want a beauty soap for a beauty bath. And your bath becomes a beauty bath when you change to proper cleansing with palm olive soap. For bathing with this beauty soap brings you the full beautifying effects of palm olive's mild and gentle lather, proved by doctors to bring most women lovelier complexions in just 14 days. Bath size palm olive is designed to give you everything you need for all over beauty care. Fragrance for daintiness, mildness for loveliness. Purity for gentleness, big bath size for thriftiness. So get big bath size palm olive, so mild, so pure, so right for all of you. If you like mysteries that are as full of chuckles as chills, be sure to hear Mr. and Mrs. North every Tuesday over this same network. And don't miss the exciting and laughable adventures of these amateur detectives. Hear Mr. and Mrs. North every Tuesday night. And be with us again next week at the same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. Stay tuned now for Jack Benny. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcast.